Thank you for purchasing a genuine Norseal product. In this video, I'll show you how to inspect and maintain the Series 7100 piston check valve. Before you start any repair or maintenance, release all pressure from the valve body. Before you unbolt the bonnet, slowly loosen the pipe plug in the top center of the bonnet. While you're doing this, listen for the sound of gas pressure escaping around the plug. Don't remove the bonnet until all trap pressure, if any, has escaped. It's very important to relieve all the pressure in this valve before disassembly or maintenance. Not doing so could result in uncontrolled venting or spilling of line fluids, which could cause environmental contamination, loss of process control, or even injury to you. To inspect the valve, you'll need to take it apart. First, you'll remove the nuts from the bonnet studs. Make sure you have the correct size wrench. Our new operations and maintenance manual has the chart that outlines the necessary wrench size with the corresponding stud size, which can be found online at www.norisseal.com. Now, lift the bonnet to remove it from the body. Remove the load spring by lifting it straight up and out of the body. Now you can remove the valve plug, cage, and guide by lifting the attachment screwed into the top of the plug. After you have removed the plug, cage, and guide from the body, they can be separated by lifting the guide, then the cage, over the top of the plug. Now remove the plug seal from the recess in the lower end of the guide, and then remove the seat and seat gasket by lifting them out of the recess in the body. Once you have the valve disassembled, you should inspect the individual components. First, take a look at the plug seal. It's made of a stainless steel spring surrounded by a TFE jacket. Examine the spring to be sure it's not bent or permanently crimped. Examine the TFE jacket under good light. The jacket must be free of scratches, cuts, or tears in order to function properly. Next, look at the valve plug. The outside diameter of the plug slides through a seal ring, so it's important that it has no nicks or scratches that could damage the TFE jacket. Handle the plug carefully so it's not damaged during maintenance. Examine the seating surface for scratches, nicks, or gouges that it could impair shutoff. If a plug has a non-metallic soft insert, Examine it closely, because it's particularly susceptible to damage. Depending on the option you choose, the construction may be a solid one-piece design, or it may be an assembly of three or more basic components. If all the components are in good condition within your insert type plug, you don't need to disassemble the plug and remove the insert. However, if the components look worn or damaged, you'll need to disassemble it to replace the insert. This is an easy process. You can secure the plug in an inverted position in a vise as it's disassembled. However, if you use a vise, place blocks of wood or other soft material on both sides of the plug to protect the surface finish. Now remove the cap screws using the correct wrench and then remove the retainer, insert, and o-ring seal from the butt plug. To reassemble the plug, install the o-ring, insert, and retainer in their respective positions and reinstall the cap screws. The new operations and maintenance manual has a chart of the recommended values for torquing the cap screws, which you can find at www.norisseal.com. After the plug is reassembled, place it upright to inspect the orifice plug and the ball check. All Series 7100 valves have one orifice plug installed in the top of the valve plug, but the number of ball checks varies with the valve size. The orifice plug and ball check contain small fluid passages, which have to be free of foreign matter for the valve to operate properly. Use a socket or a wrench to remove the ball check, and then examine it and clean out any foreign matter. Now you need to make sure the ball check is working properly by inserting a small rod that is less than a quarter inch in diameter from the upper end. You should only need a light finger pressure to push the ball off the seat. With the pressure removed, the ball should snap back against the seat. After you inspect and clean it, reinstall the ball check into the valve plug. Next, examine the orifice and eliminate any foreign matter found and reinstall it in the valve plug. This completes the inspection and maintenance of the valve plug. The next individual component you'll need to look at is the valve seat. Its beveled seating surface needs to be free of nicks and scratches. Take a look at the underside of the seat for scratches or other imperfections that would impair the proper sealing against the seat gasket. You'll also need to examine the cage, guide, and load spring. These components are typically not affected or worn by normal operation. However, you should examine them just to be sure they're in good condition. Finally, Look at the valve body. Remove the seat and bonnet gaskets from the body and inspect the gasket recesses for scratches or other foreign matter that would affect the gasket sealing. Clean the gasket recesses if you need to. Once you're done inspecting the individual components and replacing any components that show wear, you can reassemble the valve. Each Series 7100 piston check valve requires three gaskets of three different sizes. Place the seat gasket in the body recess and install the seat on top of the gasket. 
Then, place the plug guide on the work surface in an inverted position, with the deep recess facing upward. Install the plug seal in the deep recess. Make sure the open side of the seal, with the spring visible, is facing the upward end of the guide. As a result, if the guide is in the inverted position, only the TFE jacket will be visible after the seal is installed. Now place the valve plug on the work surface in the normal upright position. And place the valve cage over the plug with the extended shoulder on the cage oriented toward the top of the plug. Turn the guide over to its normal position and slip it over the plug. Due to the seal ring being squeezed between the guide and the plug, you might need to gently tap the guide into place. Place the smallest of the three gaskets into a recess in the top of the guide. You can pick up the entire plug cage guide assembly by lifting the attachment in the center of the plug. Place the assembly into the valve body and carefully position the cage over the locating shoulder on the seat. Once that's done, you can install the load spring in the recessed top of the body. Next, install the remaining gasket in the recessed top of the body. Now install the bonnet on the top of the body. Using the cross pattern bolting process, tighten the bonnet to body bolts to the recommended torques which you can find in our new operations and maintenance manual on our website at www.norseal.com. Make sure you follow good bolting practices and lubricate the bolts. As a side note, the spiral wound gasket bolt up characteristics are such that the tightening of one bolt may loosen an adjacent bolt. This will occur on the subsequent tightening of all the bolts until the bonnet to body seal is made. This requires several trials on each bolt until the nut does not turn at the given torque. Finally, tighten the bleeder plug on the top of the bonnet. For more information, download our new Series 7100 Operations and Maintenance Manual at www.norisseal.com.